Welcome, guys. Ed is here. How are you, Eddie? Very good. Thank you. Um, great to see you. Chris, the first thing you did was hand me a new rub, which is a Texas beef barbecue rub. Absolutely. Now, we've, you, you've you never done just specific beef rub, right? Correct. Correct. Usually, we just do a mix and a blend with the all-purpose in the Memphis, but this is my dad's original development. That thing's probably 25 years old, and we finally put it into production. What would you put this on? I would put that on beef ribs, I'd put it on brisket, I'd put it on hamburgers, uh, anything beef tri-tip, I mean it just makes it pop. It's it's that true peppery, salty, garlicky flavor. And what what all is in there? A lot of pepper, because obviously with beef you gotta have salt and pepper. You gotta have you gotta have the pepper, you gotta have the salt, you gotta have the garlic. The garlic's gonna help make it blend. Mm. But also we do a little Midwest spin to it, so we sort of take some of that tartness down a little bit so you taste more of the protein so you're not just tasting all pepper garlic the first thing you taste is the protein and that comes in in the second what uh what did you bring us here this is amazing well that's uh well first of all that's another one of my dad's recipes there that's the banned pork tenderloin recipe Ooh. that we actually got banned from in competition because we won too much really yes they actually um, changed the rule and of course the tenderloin is Oh, it's, like it's the most juicy. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what did you do? You smoked it. How, how much? How long? Well, believe it or not, this one was just smoked a little bit under an hour with a nice mild cherry. Uh, we actually soak it all night in brown sugar. Mm. We put a little garlic powder, a little mustard powder, and then we top it off with a little ginger and then finish it with a touch of cherry. Are you allowed to eat that? Uh, I am eating it, by the way, to forsake the rabbi. By the way, so Dave had to bring you copy in for this in the middle of the segment. People don't know, commercial copy is like when we bring Chris and Ed and Dan, everybody from the Heat Exchange in. So Riz knows you know, a little bit of an idea of where you want the conversation to go. Well, Riz took my computer away about 20 minutes ago. We're conducting an experiment. Because oh. we're conducting an experiment. So I, you know, just so you know, like uh, there's actual like work that happens that makes your life easier that I'm, I'm able to do on what, my computer. What, what I'm trying to explain in this experiment is somehow it all just works out even though you don't. And it worked out totally. They came in and no one knew until you said something that he brought me this copy. First of all, I don't need copy to talk to... Uh, Chris Marks and Ed. I, 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 no. the, the copy's all right here. I, 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 I've been I, I, to I 15 of his classes. I don't know. Like, but but I, I have a legitimate question for Chris because Allie and I just bought the house, and so I'm just starting to break in to the smoking mm -hmm. and grilling. And I, now I have the grill on probably four or five times a week, just doing something. One of the trickiest things for me is how to know when something is done. So you said you put this on for an hour. How did you know that you weren't going to be serving us raw pork this morning? You really want to know? Yeah. I knew I put it on for about an hour and I felt it. You you touched it with but, your hand? But what I recommend, anybody who's getting into this to build your confidence, yeah. use a good thermometer. They yeah. have thermal pins, they have thermal pops, yeah. they're quick reads, they're easy to use. What's the pork now? Is it 160? Well, actually the pork was used to be 160. Right. But what it is, is now it's dropped down by the uh, F, F, the family, FDA, whatever it is, yeah. dropped it down to 145. Really? And the whole issue was trichinosis. And trichinosis was actually years, I mean, it was the practice of how hogs were slaughtered. Right. And we haven't had a case of it forever. So do you use a thermometer that you can put in the meat while it's on the grill? Yeah, here, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little thing with a battery on. You pull the thing up, you stick it in while it's on the grill, and it'll give you an accurate reading. Yeah. They have about eight different kinds of yes, meat. And they're all quick reads. And, they and, got and Aaron, that numbers goes, are easy. Aaron, that goes for burgers. You burn 145 is a medium to medium rare burger. I mean, you See, do it I with... See, I thought 160 for ground meat is well, where you're he's no, correct. That, that, actually, actually, he is correct. 160 for ground meat. If you talk to any health department, 160 for ground. Anything that's got tallow in it, anything that's got ground up fat or something similar should be brought to 160. Right. Now, do, Stay. now, do we? That yeah. is totally up to us. Yeah. So my, my concern is, you know, I feel like I'm close to 160. Like I put the thermometer in and it's at like 142. And I'm like, ah, oh, another couple minutes. I put it on another couple minutes. I put the thermometer in and it's at 180. like 180. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, and that, that always <laughs> goes up after uh, it sets. Right. Well, that that's when you're cooking on something. You're cooking with a lot of heat. So when you're cooking fast and hard, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see that scale just goes crazy. Yeah. What we're doing is going low and slow. Low and slow. And, and I, Heat Exchange is hosting Chris um, a tomorrow barbecue boot camp. Saturday's 10 a.m. Learn the secrets of preparing baby back ribs, chicken, pork butt, and brisket. <clears throat> I'm telling you, 
I have seen these classes. We usually, well, we had one in the spring. Yeah, we, we had one in spring. In the spring. To register, visit heatexchangeonline.com or just call the Heat Exchange at 440-327-6242. You got a couple spots left for this? Yes, we did. Tomorrow morning. Um, and the cooking class is great. Number one, you're going to eat. Fantastic yeah, you're going to eat a lot. Food. And you're going to eat a lot because everything Chris makes, you're going to, you end up eating. But boy, I think you learn. For people that want to do this, people that are just getting into it, or people that are competition people, seems you always come up with something new every class when you when I see you, some kind of new little something that you've learned. Well, I'm constantly learning. That, that's <clears> the thing about being a teacher is right. constantly learning. Of course, being all over the United States, you know, 40 or 50 times doing these classes, I learn and I constantly learn and I adapt my methods and techniques for better. I want them the best, but I want them as easy as possible. And that's what I like about this is I teach easy. I'm not going to make this hard. Simple method technique. And that's what it is. And you need to just practice. You need to do this a few times. You'll get the hang of it. You really I I always tell the story, Casey and I, you know, God, we threw out more meat than we actually ate when we started doing this because we didn't really have you or to know what we were doing. It was trial by error. After you make a couple of really good pieces of meat, you start feeling it. it it's the confidence. <clears throat> and once you it, it's called being able to build consistency and repeatability, and that's what classes help with. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I can do this on my own. I get on YouTube University. I tell you what, I can show you in two hours how to take it up from a level two up to a level eight. Right. By just simple method and technique. Right. And, and I think it's a little intimidating at first, but once you start getting the hang of it, and I know there's been so many people Ed, that have come to your place to get their first smoker. The heat exchange has everything, folks. They have the, the opening smokers and they have... Uh, you know, as Chris calls them, the big boy toys, the uh, the good ones, the one that Casey has and, yeah. and others like that, where you can really put out tons of food for a lot of people. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and everybody we send there, uh, don't forget the kid that won our barbecue contest. Uh, yeah. Got his, uh, what is it, the Green Valley? Uh, what was his, what is pellet smoker, Dan? What did he get? Green Mountain. Green Mountain, that's it. Green Mountain pellet smoker. I got my good one. Yeah. Talking about confidence, I did two turkeys for 30 people for Thanksgiving that, this that's, year. That's going And, and I got to tell you something. In the morning, like I brined them and, you mm -hmm. know, but in the morning when I got up and I got to put them on, you know, before I rubbed them up, I'm like, man, this better work. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going down to Swenson's for Thanksgiving down the street. <laughs> it's a little nerve wracking, but once you get the hang of it, you really do it. I got rave reviews, by the way. You'll yep. know that. And yep. Chris, Chris, you should know, Riz is so proud of his stuff. I get more pictures of the, oh, yeah. the meat that he smokes oh, yeah. than his kids, yeah. than his family. <laughs> I got, I, his... you know me, man, a good looking brisket. I know, I know. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, what are you going to make tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're doing, uh, we're just doing a, really it's called a four meat class. So we're going through the whole gambit of what I call the, the barbecue proteins, brisket, butt, chicken, and ribs. Mm. I mean, let's start, can't get much more basic than that. Right. And the ribs are still my favorite to this day, but everything you make is good. I mean, I've had your salmon. I've had your, you know, fatties are the best, yeah. huh? right? We love the fatties. And Chris, I love what you do. You get real creative. You yep. know, you do. You're always looking for to smoke something new, right? Well, absolutely. And that's the great thing about it is once you learn a method and technique, it really doesn't matter what you cook. You can get really creative and have fun. Look at what we have over there. We have uh, basically cows on a beach. That's basically shrimp wrapped around kielbasa. And we smoked it. Put a little rub on it and smoked it. And people go crazy on just simple stuff. I've had four of them already this morning. And they are, oh. And you've also eaten the pork too. I haven't gotten a chance to eat it. I had. A, I wanted to try the pork tenderloin. I had a bite of the pork. Tenderloin it's good. Just to get a little bit of a sense. Oh, of it's that. phenomenal. Yeah. What uh, what wood we use? We use cherry today. You can look at the smoke ring on that, Riz. Oh. Look at the smoke ring. That that's your cherry. Oh that, yeah. That's that chemical oh, yeah. process that we talk about in the class. How we just take that flavor and mold it into the meat. Yeah. And I think you do a great job too, Chris, of not over smoking the meat. You right. know what I mean? You want the flavor and you want the taste, but you also want to taste the meat. Yeah, absolutely. You want to blend them. Mm -hmm. You don't want that heavy smoke because that's what turns people off. Yeah. Heavy mesquite, heavy hickory. Yeah. I mean, where, where it's so dark and people just don't like it, but people don't understand that that's not right. What would you say to somebody, because I get this all the time, somebody who wants to start doing this, they want to begin doing this, what, what's a good formula for them if they want to start smoking the, the good formula is is right now is it's probably 
find a class or something that's going to show you method and technique and simple. Don't go out there and drop $850 on a competition class. There's a lot of people who teach good barbecue classes. Simple method and technique. You know, sort of experiment because this whole hobby is about you. It's sure. not about me. It's not about you. Sure. It's about what you present to your family. So there's just, nothing better, by the way, Chris. Yeah. Can I say it? You know, when you have like when I have my mom and the kids over or whatever, and you know, when I make a, a brisket or I'll make ribs, and they're just like, oh my god, these are so. Oh, Aaron is eating my food too. That's like the proudest moment of, in the world. And it is a fun family thing. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's a, everybody can sort of enjoy it. And that, you know what? I'm successful if that happens right there. Right. That's how I gauge my success. Right. I don't gauge my success on some guy going out and trying to win competitions. Is it good? Absolutely. But I gauge if that guy goes out and says, this is the best product my wife said I've ever made. Yeah. Riz, I'm I, happy. I bet there are a lot of people, you know, the class tomorrow, if you're around, would be a good way to kind of get started. What? How, how do people get Again, in Again, you can go online, heatexchangeonline.com, heatexchangeonline.com, or call them at 440-327- Six two, four two. Don't forget, Heat Exchange has everything: phenomenal patio furniture. And I just, you know, shout out to Pat who came out and put in my uh, uh, fireplace front. Yeah, he showed me. He showed me a picture yeah. of it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. I ordered it online from Heat Exchange, and they come out and put it in. So if you need to upgrade your fireplace, I mean, you guys have. Uh, I, I was actually going to talk to you about. I want to get one of those ones, with, with the fake ones. The, for the basement to put down the wall ones, those rectangle uh, ones. The electric ones. The electric yeah. ones. I've seen you probably have about six or seven of those in the yeah, shop. Easily. Yeah. And uh, they are, uh, they're very attractive. Yeah. And plus, if you need rubs, I use a lot of Chris's rub. Usually I go salt and pepper on beef, but I'm going to try a new Texas beef rub. You have your sauces there. Um, they have everything from spatulas to books on how to cook. It is really our barbecue headquarters heat exchange. Absolutely. It's a fun store to visit. Come on in. It really is. Like well, the, the great thing about it is, you know I travel the country doing this. There's very few barbecue stores like you have up here in Cleveland. Right. And we spent almost eight to ten years of developing, getting the right products for the guys, doing classes. You know, it, it's the barbecue place in Cleveland. Right. Um, Chris, always great to see you. Are you amazed sometimes at how much the barbecue and the smoking has taken off? Oh man, it's crazy, isn't it? Just, just not in the U.S. It's all over. I have calls. I have podcasts in Australia. I'm having them want to set up in Germany. So, it, like, they they're just learning about this, and they're in good, Australia, and they're good at it, and they're really good at it. Sure. They got good meats, and the people are just embracing it. Like, it, it's unbelievable. Plus, it's fun. It's you fun. know, if you've got the time. I mean, I understand. There are times I'll use. I have an electric uh, 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 pellet smoker. And there are times I'll throw on some ribs and, and I gotta run somewhere or whatever and that's fine. But for you to make a day out of it, to grab a beverage, to hang out on your thing, and then the payoff, the payoff is the is food. I mean, that's what makes it right. Delicious food is the payoff. How and can it you is. go wrong? Ah, uh, Chris, always great to see you, bud. Again, the class is tomorrow. It's well worth it. And please come hungry. For those of you that are going to this class. Aaron, did we eat good in the spring? You oh, finally got to do one gosh. with me, right? It, it is. It is some delicious food. And I think as I've gotten older, barbecue is now my favorite thing to eat. Mm. And it's one thing to eat somebody else's barbecue, but it, there's something special when you're eating your Yours. Own. And that's that, again, means I'm successful. And that's what I'm about. Great job, Chris. Always great to see you. Ed, thanks for being here, Dan. Everybody, Thank you. Thanks, beautiful guys. wife is here as well. Always, <laughs> always travels with me. Wouldn't do it without her. So nice. Uh, great stuff, guys. I'm going to eat now, so we'll be right back. Stay with us.